Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If I can have all the brothers to just move forward, inshallah, just come and close together as, uh, to the Shaykh as possible, inshallah. Jazakum la khairan. Some tissue for my glasses. Shukran la komiyahi, jazakallah khair. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يجود لل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليما كثيرا أما بعض فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. So we're going to take a few minutes, inshallah, as we gel to start to make preparations for the blessed month of Ramadan. And as a revert Muslim, someone who was not raised on Al Islam, but Allah as we gel blessed me to come back to the religion of Al Islam. But not only that. He blessed me to understand and to comprehend the importance of taking the companions of Ridwanullah alayhim ajma'een as an example. Meaning that what Al-Islam was during the time of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, and the rest of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them. That's the only Islam that Allah is going to accept from people Yomul Qiyamah. So Allah Ta'ala laqadim tanna alayya. He blessed me, Allahi. Wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika fahaddith. I'm not claiming I'm from the awliya. I'm not claiming I'm from the ulama. I'm not claiming that I'm in the, in the jannah. Nisallah, al-jannah lana jami'a, inshallah. All I'm saying is I have the i'tiraf that the only Islam Allah is going to accept from us, yawmul qiyamah, is the Islam that resembles what Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali and the rest of those companions understood. And if a person stands before Allah Yom Al-Qiyamah and his Islam is different from theirs, meaning he's a person who curses Abu Bakr, 
and Aisha for an example. He curses Abu Bakr, Umar, and uh, Uthman, and Aisha, the rest of the companions, is not going to be accepted from him. So I just want to say that this is the first day of Sha'ban for this year. And we are now, inshallah, 29, 28 days before the blessed month of Ramadan. And it was the practice of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and the rest of those companions, may Allah be pleased with them, that when the month of Ramadan came, the salaf of this ummah, they started paying attention and focusing and getting ready for the blessed month of Ramadan. Ramadan just didn't sneak up on them and they didn't know that it was Ramadan. There were things that they learned from the Prophet Sallallahu in preparation of Ramadan like fasting more in this month. So in keeping with that, the brothers here decided that we will come together inshallah for a little bit of time and start talking about Ramadan, the month of worship, the month of ibadah. I think everybody here even the newest Muslim, he is a brand spanking new Muslim just out of the gate. He knows that Ramadan is the ninth month of Al-Islam. And although it is not a sacred month, it's not from the four sacred months, but nonetheless it is a month that means a lot, not just to the Muslims, but in the dunya. This is the month that Allah Azawajal revealed the Quran. And he also revealed the Torah to Musa. And he revealed the Injil to Isa ibn Maryam. And he revealed the Suhuf of Ibrahim to him and the Suhuf of Musa to him. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'een. So as a Muslim, we have to know Ramadan is the month of the Quran. It's the month of the Kalam of Allah. Those other nations in Umm, for you young brothers especially, Ramadan is just we fast, we fast. No. One of the reasons why we fast is because the Quran was revealed in this month. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzira fayl al-Quran hudan lil-nas wa bayinatin min al-huda wal-furqan faman shahida minkum al-shahra fal yasumhu This is the month that the Quran has been revealed as a guidance and a bayinat for people. So anyone who is home and you're not traveling because the Quran was revealed in this month, then let him fast. So this is the month of the Quran. So from the greatest ibadat of Ramadan is being connected to the Quran. And we'll come to that inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to mention to you brothers that we all know that the malaika of Allah azawajal, they are a creation that worships Allah all the time. They don't wait until the month of Ramadan. They don't wait until the month of Ramadan. They are a creation that worships Allah all the time. And the Prophet used to encourage his companions and by default encourage us to try to be people who compete with the malaika in some things. Obviously, you can't compete with them in everything as Allah described them in the Quran. The malaika, they don't disobey Allah and what he tells them to do. They do everything that he told them to do. One of the main angels, his name is Israfil. Rasulullah used to swear and he would say, I swear by the Lord of Jibril and Mikail and Israfil showing his position. And as Muslims, we have to come to know when we say we believe in the Malaika, we have to believe in them correctly. Some people be adding our names to the Malaika. That is not authentic that the name of the angel of Al Jannah is Ridwan. It didn't come to us from the Quran and the Sunnah, so we should avoid that. Israfil. They be coming up with a lot of names. Israfil. We stick to what the Prophet says. So one of the names of the main angels is Israfil. Rasulullah described him and he said that he's an angel that Allah created to blow into the horn. Yomul Qiyamah. And when Allah created him, he has the horn in his mouth and he's looking at the Arush of Allah above because Allah's Arush is over the seventh heaven. He is over his Arush in a way that befits his, ma his majesty. 
that angel is looking and he doesn't blink, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from Al Khawf. He's afraid that if Allah said, Bloom now, that he blinks at that time and it's like he is not on the job. So he doesn't blink. So one of the benefits of that is that the Malaika, they don't slouch when it comes to the worship of Allah. If they can get in the first row on the right, on the right side for the five prayers, that's what they do. They don't come to the Salat al Jumu'ah, for an example, and just when the Imam is going to pray, that's when they come in. They don't have that type of kasal like the munafiqoon. Allah Ta'ala mentioned about them in the Quran with a qamu, with a salati, qamu, kusala. Yura'un al nasa wa la yathkurun Allah illa qalila. The hypocrites, wa ma aktharuhum al yawm. The hypocrites or a group of people, when they stand up for prayer, they stand up lazy, lethargic. They don't want to pray. And when they pray, they only pray so people can see them praying. Their mother, their father. The child doesn't get up and pray and he looks at the place of sajda and he's concentrating. I'm standing before the Lord of all the worlds. And he prays like that or she prays. You no. Know, they get up they look at mother and father looking. The malaik are not like that. They are a creation that when it comes to the ibadat, they are on top of the job. Bani Adam is the problem. Bani Adam is the one who has to struggle with al-kasal. And the Prophet used to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kasal. I seek refuge in you and being lazy. Being a lazy bum. I don't want to get up and work. All I do is want to lay down and not do anything. And one of the biggest enemies right now, and one of the biggest weapons of a shaitan to make a person kaslan is his phone. Where he could just sit and just keep flicking and flicking and flipping and flicking. And before he knows it, two hours, an hour has passed by, and he's on a PlayStation or something. The malaik are not like that. That's the shahid. The malaik are from those who are in the heavens. Listen to this. In the heavens, there's no ma'asiyah of Allah Azawajal. No ma'asiyah. Unless Bani Adam or the jinn go to the heaven. That's it. As for the malaika, it's nothing but ibadat. Nothing but ibadat. That's in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. But if Bani Adam goes inside of the heavens on an airplane, in a rocket or whatever, then you're going to have problems. If Benny Adam goes up there, it's going to be problems. If Shaytan, the jinn go up there. When Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran with Kunna al-Mala'ikatis judu li Adam fa sajudu illa iblis aba wa stakbara wa kana min al-kafirin In the heavens Allah told the Mala'ika bow down to Adam. Why? He told them to bow down to Adam because Allah created only four things with his hands and both of his hands are right hands why did he tell him bow down to Adam because Allah created the Jannah with his own two hands Allah created the pen with his own two hands Allah created the Arush with his own two hands and Allah created Adam with his own two hands and both of his hands are right hands Allah said to the Iblis, Hey, Iblis, what prevented you from bowing down to the one that I created with my own two hands? Iblis said, You created me from fire, you created him, and a khayru minhu. I'm better than him. I'm better than him. I'm a racist, created me from fire and him from the dirt. The point here is, everything else that Allah created, he said, be, and it came into creation. It wasn't for Iblis to ask any questions, not for you and me to ask questions. We just get with the program. We just get with the program. So as it relates to this, what's the point? Iblis had istikbar, he was arrogant in the heavens, because that's the only time the masih of Allah happens. It's from Beni Adam, when Adam went to the tree and he got kicked out or expelled from the Jannah. Other than that, there's no masiyah in the heavens. The heavens is the place of ibadah. The Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, in a hadith that's known as the hadith al-atita. 
Al-Atid is the sound if you sit on your saddle, a leather saddle, that's the sound that it makes. Or if you go up the stairs, you can hear the creaking in the steps. Rasulullah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was taken on the Isra al-Miraj, he said, and he told us one of the realities, that in the heavens, there is no place where you put four fingers, four fingers in the heavens, except that in that area, there is an angel making qiyam, praying to Allah, or an angel making sajda, bowing to Allah Azza wa And that's for the heavens all the way up, and that's for the heavens all the way out there. It's Benny Adam who has a problem. As for the Malaika, no. They have the ibadah of Allah Azza wa all the time. And when they come down to the earth, they come down for wazifa. They come down here for the ibadah of Allah. They come down to be on either side of the human beings to do what Allah told them to do, to write. He told us, Anytime people come to a masjid, there are malaika that come down and they engulf them, they sit down and they be in this area. Anyone who says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are malaika who are flying around. They take that salams and they go and they give it to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the malaika come down here, they're doing ibadah. They don't come down here to chill out for sure. Jibril say, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Muhammad, what do you think about the, about the companions who participated in the war of Badr? Rasulullah said, they're the best of us. So the best of this ummah are those Muslims. The best Muslims, the companions, are those Muslims who made hijrah from Mecca and those who participated in the war of Badr. What do you think about them, Ya Muhammad Rasulullah said, they are the best of us. Jibril said, and also the Malaika that participated in the Badr. They are the best of the Malaika. So the point is, what? The Malaika come down for jihad. The malaika come down, muakkabat. They come down to protect people from what any harm and so forth and so on. So the angels of Allah, they don't disobey Allah. The Prophet told us, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, in al-Isra wa al-Mi'raj, he saw the Baytul Ma'mur. And that's a house that's in the heavens somewhere. 70,000 angels go in and they come out never to return again. So I'm 58, so 58 years on this earth, 60 years, Hijra calendar, 60 years. I don't know how many of those angels went in and out, but why do they go in and out? For the ibadah of Allah, never to come back again. The Prophet told us sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, concerning the ibadat of those angels, those angels, they don't disobey Allah, none of them. He told us in the Quran, in the tafsir of the ayah, thamania. There are eight, there are eight angels that will carry the arush of your Lord There are eight angels that will carry the throne of your Lord, Yom al -Qiyama. They will come with Allah's arsh. Bi tariqatan tariqu bi jalalatihi, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nuthbituha. We don't make any kalam. That's what Allah said, that's what he said. Rasulullah said, those angels that carry the throne, those angels, between the earlobe of one and his shoulder, his earlobe and his shoulder is so many years. They are so big. The knot of Jahannam is going to be brought. 70,000 angels will be carrying it. On each one of those have 70,000 ropes. All of those angels, they just worship Allah. The point is the ibadah of the malaika. The ibadah of the malaika. Allah said about them in the Quran, لَنْ يَسْتَنْكِفُ الْمَسِيحُ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَبْدِ لِلَّهِ Isabunu Maryam 
is not too proud to do the ibad of Allah. He was born with a mu'jiza. You all know that hadith of the shifa'at al-kubra. Yom al-qiyamah, the people are going to go to Adam and say, Oh, Adam, you're the father of mankind. Help us get us out of this. He says, not for me. I made a mistake. I got everybody uh, expelled from Jannah. Go to Noah. Go to Noah. Uh, go to hey, Noah. You, 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 you're, 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 you're the Rasul. First messenger. Uh, make, make intercession for us. Get us out of this situation. And no, I asked Allah something that I shouldn't have asked him for my son, who was a non-Muslim. I shouldn't have done that. It's not for me. Go to Ibrahim. They go to Ibrahim. Ya Ibrahim, you're the Khalil of Allah. Allah's friend. Get us out of this situation. Help us out. He said, no, I can't do it. I made three lies. I can't do it. And the lies that he made, you can help. You can understand them. You can understand them. A man want to take his wife. He want to take his wife. He said, that's my sister. He said, it's not for me. Go to Musa. Oh, Musa, get us out of this situation. You're the Kaleem of Allah. You went to Beni Israel. And anybody who goes to Beni Israel, you have to be strong. Anybody who has to deal with Beni Israel, you have to be strong. You went to, he says, not for me. I killed a man. I killed a man. Go to Isa. When they go to Isa, and this is the point, Isa's not going to say he did anything. He says, not going to say he did anything. He's going to say, it's not for me. Go to Muhammad. Why he's not going to say he did anything? Because he's a tremendous individual. The way he was born, the mu'jizat that he had. He'd been up in the heavens in the way in the place that Allah knows best for over 2,000 years. Over 1,400, he'd been gone. And he's going to come back. And when he comes back, he's going to judge with the kitab and the sunnah. And he's going to break the course. He's going to kill the swine. Some scholars said he's going to get married, but the hadith didn't say that. Allahu alam. Allahu alam. The point here is, he's not, he's, not, he's not arrogant not to do the ibad of Allah. So there's no one here near to a seven Maryam. So when the month of Ramadan comes, some people, when the ibadat of Al-Islam come, they don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Ramadan is looked at as something that's heavy. I don't want to do it. Now there's a person in our audience, in our message, man, woman, or both, they get massive migraines from fasting, so they're not looking forward to it. I understand that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the one who, he just doesn't understand what the ibadah is in Al-Islam, and what Ramadan is. So he or she doesn't want to see Ramadan. So the ayah said, Al-Masih, Isa ibn Maryam, He's not shy to do the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, nor are those angels that are closest to Allah shy to do the ibadat of Allah. And whoever has al-kibr istikbar, anyone who does this, Allah is going to gather all of them to him yawm al qiyam and punish them. So if the malaika who are closest to Allah, like I mentioned, Jibril, Mikail, Israfil, the Hamrat al-Arsh, all of those malaika, they have no problem with being, having tadhullul, being humili low and, and having to all there, then why would Beni Adam have a problem? How in the world can my daughter go to university, go get a job or whatever, go outside, and she has a problem with the hijab? The Sabin Maryam and those prophets and messengers, they didn't have a problem. The Malaika, they don't have a problem. And that's why for the discussion to present itself, who's better? The angels or the human beings? Some scholars say that, some scholars say that, some people took the middle course, but the question, how could human beings who are lazy and they don't want to worship Allah, how can they be compared, have any maqarana to those malaika who whatever they're told to do, they do it? How? So Allah has, the Prophet Wasallam has encouraged us in a number of ways to compete with the malaika. Compete how? That you don't blink your eyes? Nah, that's not permissible, right? You have to go to sleep. You, know, you gotta get married, you have to go to sleep, you have to fast, break your fast. And anybody has a raqbah on the sunnah of the Prophet and he's not from the Rasul. You can't compete with the angel not, not uh, blinking. No, but in other ways. He said to his companions before the prayer, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Halla 
tasufuna kama tasuful malaika inda rabbiha why don't you people line up the way the angels line up towards their lord the companions were students of knowledge they didn't hear words except they say how what do you mean ya rasulullah cave why how the muslim today unfortunately kaslan and kasal here hear something and it doesn't mean anything something he never heard before it could be something that he heard it differently but he won't take the time out to go and get some knowledge about that thing lazy the companions were not like that the man came into the masjid ya rasulullah can i kiss my wife while i'm fasting he said yes the man went out that door Another man came in the other door. Ya Rasulullah, can I kiss my wife while I'm fasting? He said, no. The man left. The companions saw this, they saw that. They heard this, they heard that. Now the single companion sat there and said, wow. Didn't Allah say in the Quran, wa kana min indi ghayri la wajudu fi ikhtilafin kathira? None of them said that. None of them said, you see the hadith, you see the sunnah. You can take it if you want. That sunnah have tana they didn't say that. They did what Allah told them to do. Fas'alu ahl al-dhikr in kuntum la ta'alamun. Our mother, a lady, Aisha, said, Ya Rasulullah. That man came and he asked you the question. You said, yes. The other man came and asked you the same question. You said, no. Why? Rasulullah gave them the, the explanation. And listen to what I'm saying. Any ayat of the Quran that appears to contradict another ayat, there's a plausible explanation. Any hadith that appears to, to conflict with another hadith, there's an explanation. Any ayat, any hadith seems to conflict, there's a plausible explanation. Don't be like Iblis, mutakabbir, mustakbir. I'm a revert to this religion. Some of us don't know the noon as sakin. We don't know noon as sakin. If it hits you on your head, you don't even know that's noon as sakin. You don't know your elbow from your uncle bone. But then when it comes to the issue of Islam, the person says, ah, the hadith, the little the Bukhari. No, there's a plausible answer. You just have to ask those who know, like Aisha did. Ya Rasulullah, why? He said, as for that man over there, he was older. He was stronger. He can give his wife a kiss and leave, like the Prophet would kiss his family when he was fasting. As for this one, He's a shab, he's a young man. That one right there, he shouldn't get married in Ramadan. So now that Ramadan is coming, don't get married in Ramadan. I'm not saying it's haram, but you'll be breaking your fast in the month of Ramadan. Don't get married in Ramadan. He said, as for that man right there, that man right there, he was younger. Oh, everybody, okay. All of the religion is like that. When you think that there's some ta'arit, there's no ta'arit. Sometimes it is, because this hadith is authentic, and this one is weak. But the point is, don't be of those people who are arrogant. That, that, that's the point, like the Iblis. So as it relates to Ikhwani, as we were mentioning in this issue, when we talk about the month of Ramadan, and other than Ramadan, being kaslan and being lazy, it is a big mushkila. It's a big mushkila. So concerning what we want to present to you brothers today, in regards to this, is just to let you know we have to compete with the Mala'ika. How do the Mala'ika line up, Ya Rasulullah? He says, Sallallahu Alaihi How do they line up to their Lord? He says, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam, Yatamuna as saf al awwal bil awwal, thumma yatarasoon fi saf. The angels, when they're gonna pray, they complete the first line. He's not lazy and come in and stay back there. Not for Juma other than Juma. Why don't you people line up the way the Mala'ika and, and, and have Musabaka? Sabiku wa sabiku ila maghfiratan min rabbikum. Even, even, something issue like that. Issue, small issue. Don't come and stay back there. Come to the right side, get in the line, and then come together. That's what he said. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. 
He led the people in the Salat and he read Surah Al-Rahman. And you know Surah Al-Rahman is the ayah for bi ala'i rabbikuma tukadhiban. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Bani Adam and the Jan. The Thaqilan that the Prophet was sent to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which of the favors of your Lord would you deny? Rasulullah read that surah. And after the prayer, he turned around to the companions and he said, Mali, Asma'u, Al Malaika, Ahsana Minkum Jawabin, Li Rabbihim. Why is it that I see that the Malaika are better than you people as it relates to answering what their Lord said? Again, no one said, Oh, let me leave the masjid. They want to know. And what are you talking about, Rasulullah? How was the jawab of the Malaika? He said, When I read this surah and the Malaika were here, the jinn, the jinn, the Muslim jinn, when they was reading, every time they heard the repetition, and every time they said that, they said, every time they heard that, we will not reject or deny any of the ni'mah of our Lord for every ayah. So as a result of that, if the Muslim wanted to do that and he wanted to say that in the salat, you have a precedent because the Prophet told the people what had happened. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the shahidu min al is that the Rasul was making tajjee of the people. Be like the malaika. Be like the malaika. Although you're not from the malaika, you have a lot to be grateful for and to be thankful for. And don't look at Ramadan or other than Ramadan as being heavy. As being heavy like that. Allah mentioned about the month of Ramadan in those ayat, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرِ وَمَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرِ Another ayat he said, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Allah wants ease for you. He doesn't want to make things difficult for you. Allah wants to make takhfif. This thing is heavy. He wants to make it light for you. In the month of Ramadan, if you're traveling, you don't have to fast. If she's pregnant, she doesn't have to fast. If the person is sick, he doesn't have to fast. If the person is old, he doesn't have to fast. Every Ramadan, the first khutbah that I give, not as another, not as an oath, but it's just my sunnah. The first khutbah is always about the ease of Ramadan because I deal with a lot of Africans from West Africa. My mother-in-law, another than that, from West Africa. And the person is 65, 75, 85. And they insist on fasting in Ramadan. And it's not something Allah wants from them. So you have the person who's old doing what he shouldn't be doing. The prohibition of that major sin. Don't kill yourselves by fasting. You don't have to fast. Don't kill your baby. You don't have to fast. The lady said, but I could do it. But Allah doesn't want that from you. The Prophet was sent with the religion that he called al hanafiyyah to Samha. The religion that makes things easy. Allah is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Latif, Al-Halim. And the and, 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 and best dua and, and later to Qadr. You all know the best dua. All that dua will show us Allah Azza wa Jal. He wants things easy for people. He pardons people. He is Al Afu and he loves Al Afu. If you don't, can't do it, don't put that on yourself. So we find the older people from Algeria, from Morocco, from Somalia, from Nigeria. We'll find the elders, they ready to get busy. But then we find the younger people not wanting to do, having any nashab. Kaslan! And you know this street right here, Kilburn? I've been coming to Kilburn a while, for a while. I've been in this masjid a long time ago before it was like this, mashallah. And I know there are a lot of places on this street, in this area, in the month of Ramadan, other than Ramadan, where you can waste a lot of time, the coffee shop and other than that. So the point here, Khwani, what we want to call you guys to, you brothers, what we want to interest you with is the importance of, the importance of getting yourself mentally ready for the month of Ramadan. 
You know, the great scholar of Islam, Imam Malik, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Al Imam Malik never used to travel to Bukhara and Egypt and Syria. He didn't travel, he stayed in Medina. People came to him and he had scholars in Medina. He didn't have to travel. So you're not going to see him traveling to different places to get knowledge. In the month of Sha'ban, people knew. When you get to Medina, if you arrive in Medina in Sha'ban, you'll get the last lessons of Al-Imam Malik. And usually those lessons are connected to the ahkam of Ramadan. But once Ramadan came, Al-Imam Malik stopped teaching people. He stopped making the tahdith with hadith. He stopped, disconnected himself. Because he did what? He turned to the recitation of the Quran, reading the Quran himself. He turned to him, himself, turning to Allah and he left off teaching. That's how the Salaf of this Ummah used to be. That great Tabi'i who used to go through the Quran with Abdullah ibn, Masr, Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. His name is Qatada or Mujahid, one of the two. In the month of Ramadan, he would take the Mus'haf, the Quran, and he was a Hafiz of the Quran, Mufassir of the Quran. He was a Lughawi, the man was a scholar of the Arabic language. He knew the Quran. He would take that Quran and he would kiss it and he'd say, Kitabu Rabbi, Kitabu Rabbi. And he would start reading the Quran in the month of Ramadan. Now, I don't want anybody to believe when he said, Kitab Rabbi, that that means, as some of the Asian community does, they pick up the Quran and go, No, we should stay away from those innovations because this is not something that the companions were upon. The Molid, the companions knew nothing about no Molid. They knew nothing about Salatul Gharaib, 27th. Al Isra al Mi'raj, Allahu A'la wa A'lam. We don't know when that was, but whenever it was, there's no special salah in the month of Rajab. Those companions, what they did, and it didn't go against the Quran and the Sunnah, and other companions didn't go against it, it's the religion for us. So we have to come to know how and what did they do in preparation for the month of Ramadan. So that's kind of like an introduction, really, Akhwani, that I want you to remember. It was kind of long, but it's the introduction. Those who live in the heavens, they are busy with the ibadah of Allah. The people on the earth are busy with dhulm and fajur and fisk and shirk. And sometimes the dhulm is even, they oppress each other. I mean, closest people oppressing each other. As it relates to this issue of ibadah, the ibadah in Al Islam, is uh, in Al Islam, how we understand ibadah is not the way Christians and Jews and Sikhs and Hindus understand ibadah. One of the great scholars of Islam gave a nice tarif for ibadah worship. And he said that ibadah in Islam is a ismun jami' li kulli ma yuhibbu Allah wa yardah. من الأقوال والأفعال الظاهرة والباطنة. Worship in Al Islam is a comprehensive word that includes and inculcates everything that Allah loves, everything that Allah is pleased with, from your statements and your actions. The statements that are out loud and apparent, like right now, you can hear this statement: "It's ibadah, it's dawa." And also from the statements that you can hear, that you can hear when a person has a good niyyah to do something inside of his head and his heart. And it's also from the actions that you do that people can see in the ones that they can see. So in the month of Ramadan and outside of the month of Ramadan, you're sitting there, is ibadah. You kept your wudu, is ibadah. Let me just give you an example with the tamr, the date. As an African-American, before I came into Islam, I didn't know anything about no date. You bring me a date, I said, what's that? And if you say, hey, eat it, I said, I don't want that. It's not from the time of Bani Qomi. That's why I said, I don't want that. But now as a Muslim, I'll eat dates because I'm a Muslim. 
and dates in Ramadan especially dates in watermelon la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah the dates in the watermelon is enough for me brother now as an african american we love watermelon this is the point the date the date doesn't have anything to do with the price of peanuts all by itself go to the store to the bakala that date that tamar timur has nothing to do with the price of peanuts but when you take that date and you say bismillah before eating it that's ibadah when you take that date and you put it in your right hand and not your left hand and you eat it that's ibadah when you take that date and you split it in half you give someone half you take the other half or give them whole your that's ibadah you take that date and you have a baby and you give him the tahmiq with the date because that's what prophet muhammad did someone is in greenland you guys know greenland right greenland it's cold a lot of somalis in greenland if you didn't know in that cold allah musta'an it is cold them greenland white people in greenland don't know nothing about any dates no dates in greenland but i bet you as the prophet told us any house that doesn't have dates in it is a house that's hungry it's a house that's hungry in greenland a white revert man a white revert woman they come into this deen and because part of being a muslim is you have to love the messenger and follow him sallallahu alaihi wasallam you'll find those people giving their little kid this date because it becomes a part of our religion so that's ibadah in al-islam it's not just praying no ibadah is not just fasting so in the month of ramadan as it approaches inshallah as we just want to remind you of a few things there are many ibadat the most important of which is the tawheed of allah for wallahi wa billahi wa tallahi if you one of those people of khurafat you know came into this religion i started hearing and seeing crazy things the muslims would go in and they turned the lights off and they put the incense on when i smelled the incense it just caught my intiba any time i see incense i don't know it's from i looked and it reminded me when i first became a muslim i'm a brand spanking new muslim i'm new when the people came for the dhikr of allah and they were doing a dhikr i never read that but it didn't look right it didn't seem when i asked them they just told me i have to do it and because i didn't do it they got mad at me they were upset and then they all stood up they all stood up and i didn't stand up i said what are you standing up for they said rasulullah just came into the room i was on the fitra i didn't believe that they got mad at me So if that's your religion you'll be in trouble yawm al qiyam that's not what we're talking about from the ibadat so a person has to have a tawheed know who Allah is where he is what he does what he doesn't do and you can't be of those people the they say hazir nazir hazir nazir mean hazir Allah is here nazir rasulullah is everywhere omnipotent he sees everything he knows the ilm al ghaib he didn't die the khatam the yarmi all of these things now so in the month of ramadan and for the rest of your life a tawheed a tawheed if a man killed a hundred people and all of those hundred people were muslims some of them ulama and they killed them and he died not making shit with allah Allah forgive him and then with this lgbt stuff going on we're not for lgbt we'll say from this mischief that's from the akbar al kabair and it's against the fitra but if a person did that they don't go outside of islam if they know that they're sinning if they died on that they really were raised up yawm al qiyamah then under the mashi of allah it's not for you and me to judge that the crime is a kabira i don't want anybody doing that around my family i don't want no one teaching that to my family but if a muslim did that and he died you say hey that's between you and allah yawm al qiyamah but if a person dies making shit he's in trouble the second ibadah that i encourage you of in ramadan and outside of ramadan is this prayer because there's no action you can do that's better than it no action with your 
jawari that you can do better than this prayer. He said, as salat khairul mawdu'ah. The prayer is the best thing that you can do in the course of your day. The wajib prayer, the sunnah prayer is the best thing that you can do. And then I say, if a person in the month of Ramadan is fasting and not praying, he doesn't have a fast. He doesn't have a fast. And that's because abandoning the prayer, it destroys your actions and your deeds. Whoever misses Salat al-Asr, just one prayer, Salat al-Asr, is going to wipe away his deeds and destroy his deeds. So we find we have those people who do that. They fast in the month of Ramadan, but they don't pray. Let me hurry up. Concerning the month of Ramadan, I, report, I, re, I remind you of this third thing, Ikhwani, and that is, inshallah, khayrukum anfa'ukum linnas. The best of you is the one who brings benefit to others. I've never been in this masjid since it's had a new imam, a new admin, the new situation. But I know a lot about this masjid because I'm in other masajid. I know about this masjid without anyone telling me that it's usually the same few people doing all the work. It's usually the same few people who are cleaning the place, the same people who give the money. It's not everybody, that's usually the case. And I'm not putting anyone down. I'm just saying, what kind of Islam is that? Khayrukum anfa'akum nas. The best of you is the one who brings benefit to other people. Why is the Quranic teacher better? Okay, he memorized himself. Yomul Qiyamah, he'll keep going up, you know, for every ayah. He memorized his mother and his father. He'll, inshallah, get them into Jannah, a crown for them, inshallah, no doubt. But by teaching the community, He's bringing the khair to other people. So the month of Ramadan is this opportunity. Don't be one of those people who all you do is take, take, take in your marriage. We can't be like that. Everything you take, take, take. Has to be a two-way street. Now, being a person who people come to and being married myself, I know what the Muslim wife has to go through. I know what my wife goes through. Dropping a kid off of school, picking the kids up five days a week. And then on a weekend, taking them to their activities. Coming home, cooking, cleaning, ironing, all of that. And as the husband, I don't do very much. Because my dawah is, hey, I'm giving dawah, I'm busy. And I am busy. But that lady is doing a lot. And it's usually the case in our masjid. That mother, that wife, is doing more work than her husband. And it's not like that. I'm not saying to you brothers to put an apron on and be in a house like I'm not saying that. But I'm saying we have to drop the kids off. We have to pick the kids up. We have to do more. We have to do more. Because the best of you are those people who bring benefit to other people. And Ramadan is like that. Ramadan is a month where other people are gonna come to this masjid, it's gonna be more people. So that means we need more money. We need more dates. We need more water. More water is going to be used here. More electricity is going to be used, inshallah. There's more, more, more. But you're still giving the same, which is nominal. Now, don't get it wrong. I understand if you don't have it to give, no problem. Allah doesn't burden anyone behind his scope. But there are other things you can do. You can come and you can clean up the place. You can come and you can... That's the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is the month of ibadah. Not ibadah one, ibadah, but ibadat, ibadat in Islam. So my encouragement to you, and I'm going to be leaving this place, inshallah, my encouragement to all of you is to take advantage of this Ramadan and make it different from the Ramadans that have gone before. 
from the ni'mah of Allah upon all of us is that inshallah if we get an opportunity to see another Ramadan it's an opportunity to make the tahseen of this Ramadan better than before because I think most people when we start off Ramadan we feel good because of what fasting does and because you're not really mixing with people as such so you become a better person especially in the first few days but after four, five, six, seven days that's when we start easily going back to how it was before but now as I mentioned to you you got to find out you have to find out how were the salif of this ummah when it came to the month of Ramadan you found that they would divide Ramadan up into three thirds the first 10 days they looked at it a particular way the second 10 days they looked at it a particular way and the last 10 days they would tie up their izar and they would do more more by making itikaf and other than that but the first 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 10 days you just gotta get in the flow the next 10 you have to stay on what you did before and not go back and then the last 10 days look for later to qadr you look for later to qadr in a way that is mashru'a a lot can be said khwani but they asked me to go up to 7 o'clock and then 7.15, inshallah, we take any Q&A and we're going to get out of here. Hopefully, we'll come and see you at another time. So concerning the ibadat in the month of Ramadan, we're, all I'm saying, to remind yourself, this is the first talk I gave uh, before Ramadan in this masjid this year. I say to you, brothers, we make jihad, inshallah, and increase all of the ibadat of al-Islam, like the ibadah of, uh, what do you call it, uh, ad-du'a. Isa ibn Maryam, he's not proud to worship Allah, nor the malaika. There's an ayat Allah Azza wa mentioned in the Quran, The ayah said, Qara wa qara rabbukum udu'uni astajib lakum inna alladheena yastakbiruna an ibadati sayadkhuluna jahannam al-dakhirin Your Lord said to you, make dua to me and I will answer your dua. Verily those people who have kibr, istikbar, they won't make dua. Allah is going to cause them to go into the hellfire and they're going to be low. The ayat is clear. Ya ayyuhan nas, antumul fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu ghaniyun hameed. All of you are weak and poor, muhtaj to Allah. I don't know most of you, but I know you got problems in your life. Health problems, mental problems, family problems, social, everybody here. And I had problems. And yet, we don't make dua to Allah, that ibadah. The authentic hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man la yadu Allah, yagdubu Allahu Alaihi. Anybody who doesn't make dua to Allah, Allah becomes angry with them. How can he not make dua? How can she not make dua? She's pregnant, his wife is pregnant, his mother is sick, Corona is all over the place. We have all kinds of issues going on. Our children are off the hook, off the hook, off the hinges, especially here in London. But the father doesn't make dua to Allah for that child. Like he can't say, man, I feel I made enough dua. He can't say that. Most people are going to say, I haven't made enough for all that I need. It has a lot to do with, in some people's cases, being arrogant. But it has to do with al-ghafla as well, just not being aware. So the person he can't give, he doesn't have any money. Okay, help the community by making dua. For an example, everybody can get in where you fit in. That's the point. Don't be one of those people who, you're just one of those people who you just take and take and take and take and take and take until there's nothing else to be taken and you complain. Don't be one of those people. So I'm going to stop here, inshallah. If you brothers have any questions for the next seven, five, ten minutes, mm, be happy to answer any of your questions.
Go ahead, my brother. The ibadat, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the worship is what you do out in the open and in secret. What are some secret worships that you can do? Being afraid of Allah, having khawf. A person is all by themselves and they start crying because they're afraid of Allah. And their eyes shed tears because of the dhunub and the ma'asi, zina, Khamar, leaving Salah, Kabair. Anas ibn Malik said to the Tabi'een, Anas ibn Malik was from the ulama of the companions, he said to those people, You people are doing sins that in your eyes they are like a piece of hair. During the time of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we used to see those sins as being from the mubiqat. You people made ghibah as if it's like back then he's saying. You made ghibah like eating your brother's flesh and is dead. Like it's nothing. During the time of the prophet, we would consider that was something that would destroy you. The lady cuts her hair right here. The practicing brother's wife cuts her hair he said, you do sins, you look at it as a shara. It's just, we used to see it at the time of the prophet, it would destroy you. Taking off his beard, for an example. So from the ibadat that are hidden is a tawakkul, al istighatha, al isti'ana, al tadallul, being low, humility. Uh, seeking Allah's assistance. Those are the things that are inside of a person's heart. Nobody can see that. So those are examples of the things that are hidden. And there are many. Salam, <laughs> Yaakhi. So my brother is asking about, you know, some of the fitting and the drama that we have just living in the West, especially in the West. One of the big problems that we have here in the West is the LGB community, and they're very powerful. And they become our colleagues, our bosses in school and things. Uh, very quickly, I uh, went with my wife to a uh, madrasa in uh, Birmingham, and we... Uh, Ask the people, hey, my boy is three years old, we want to bring him to this madrasa. Do you do any celebrations of the holidays? They said, no, we don't celebrate, but we expose the kids to the holidays. So they have for Christmas a lot of stuff, two weeks. White Santa Claus come in. That's part of what they do. You sit on his lap. They have pictures, Christmas tree, different things. They have some stuff for uh, Sikh, Hindu, and for Islam, they had the Eid, they had a gingerbread cookie and a masjid picture. I told them, it's not fair. Why the Christian all that? And then I said, okay, no problem. We won't bring our kid in at that time. My wife asked the lady, are there any LGBT gay pride, this, that, do you do that? The lady told my wife, no. This place is designed, non-denomination, no religion. That kids just play around and learn social skills, develop their speaking skills. That's all it's for, three years old. So we took our kid to the school. Shaybatul Hamd, Shaybatul Khair. My wife looked at the Instagram page of the school and found last week or the week before LGBT stuff, an activity they did with my kid. Knowing full well that I went in there and I talked to them. 
And when we talk to them about Christmas, they say, but what about the, and it's a Muslim community where we are, all Muslim. What about the Muslim teachers? They wear elves like, you know, Santa Claus helpers, and they did. They, they. I said, look, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I said, I'm a revert. I'm a revert. I don't say I'm better than those people, but you know how you people are Christians, you just come in the, you like that? A lot of them are like that. I'm not saying I'm better than them, but that's why they put Santa Claus on and all that stuff like that. So what happened? We went and we talked to that lady, and that lady was at first very rough and tough, talking about, these are my values, hers, my values. We didn't come here about your values. So as my wife and I are talking to this lady, you could see she was a shaitana. She's forcing this stuff on my kid. Forcing it. And that's just how it is. So how do we deal with it? I say what Allah said in the Quran. Fattakullah mustata'tum. Fear Allah to the best of your ability. Get knowledge about your religion to know how to deal with people. Know how to be shadeed and know how to be halim. Take it easy. There's some things that you should be serious about. Some things you should know. When I first went into that school, the lady told me she wasn't to have a nice idea about du'at because there was a man who came there prior to me. He let his kid build Legos, two buildings with Legos. And then the boy took an airplane and said, Shee! symbolic of, you know what? I said to the lady, look, I myself, I'm appalled at that. I mean, this is not our religion. Someone to do that is not our religion. Just as those Christians in Uganda and what they're doing to people over there, the extremists and all, that's not your religion. Don't blame me for that. But we had to get that out of her head, that we're not those crazy people, nor are we the ones who apologize. So get knowledge of your religion to know how to deal with these people. Our Rasul and our Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brought us a religion that if you know your religion, you know how to navigate when to be shadid and when to be not shadid, when to talk and when not to talk. But if you're just emotional, you're just emotional. All the time, you're throwing over the table. All the time, throwing over. So you're just making the carpet dirty and raising up your blood pressure. That's all you're doing. And giving a bad image of yourself and the religion. So learn the religion. Speak out for yourselves and speak up for yourself. I gave a khutbah yesterday, and the khutbah was about what's going on in um, Ukraine. And I just said, I just want to ask a question. And I started asking questions about the contradictions. Why, when they do that, for white people, it's one rule. For Muslims and people of color, it's another rule. The Muslims didn't let that khutbah go out at first. They didn't let that khutbah go out. Why? Ooh, the boogeyman. We have to be so afraid. Don't be afraid about your religion. Don't be afraid. Allah said in the Quran, I mean, ayat, we have the izzah. So learn your religion, brother, and just take it easy and have hikmah. Be rough and tough in the right time and the place. Be quiet, speak, right time, and so forth and so on. Learn the religion. Concerning what's halal and what's haram, working in the restaurant in the month of Ramadan is haram. And feeding people and working around food. Anybody who says something is haram or halal, they have to bring the proof for that. And if they bring the proof, we look at the proof and see how those companions understood those proofs. Especially as it relates to the, halal, the haram. If someone is saying that, we say to them, bring your proof. Hatu burhanu. If that's true, let us see that. But from what I know, it's not haram to work in a restaurant in the month of Ramadan. What's haram is to eat the food. What's haram is for you to eat the food while you're fasting. It's permissible to work there. But if a person is maftoon, he's, gonna, he's a fitna being around a fool, and it makes him eat it being there, then that guy has to remove himself from the situation. But generally speaking, you can work in a restaurant, Akhi. Okay, Akhi, tfadal, get out of here. Tfadal, Akhi. Wafikum barakallah.
the ayat that I wanted to mention was وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَهْزُنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Don't be sad and don't be weak when you people are the alone. You are the higher if you're truly believers. The hadith said Al-Islam ya'la wa la yu'la alayhi. Al-Islam is uppermost and nothing goes over Al-Islam. So as I look at the situation in um, Ukraine, I'm going to look at that as a Muslim, filters, first Muslim, I'm a Muslim first, not American, not black, not, nope, I'm going to look at everything Islamically to decide what's what. When I meet you, I'm going to decide from Islam how I'm going to deal with you, how I'm going to look at you. But then after that, I'm going to look at things as a black man. As a black man, I'm going to look at things. So some of you have come to this country and you actually are shocked at the double standards of the West with what's going on right now. But we've been living this for a long time. We've been dealing with this nightmare for a long time. And that's why people like Malcolm X cannot read Surat al-Fatiha correctly. Couldn't read Surat al-Fatiha. But at a time when it was not cool or safe for African Americans to stand up in America and say things, that man stood up and said, I'm a Muslim. And Islam is this and this and that. And when they used to ask him questions, he never used to tap dance. You know, the Bojangles tap dance. He told them straight how it was. And now we are very apologetic about the hop and Islam. And now we act like this is some new stuff. This stuff has been going on. I've been a Muslim since 86. Since 86, the Palestinian Muslims have been in their condition since that time till now. What, 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 what's the problem? Why, why they can't get sanctions? Why can't they defend themselves? Why Kashmiris can't defend themselves? I think part of the problem is a lot of us, we come over here and we also are racist until we get slapped by the Grand Wizard. The Grand Wizard. You know the Grand Wizard? You know the Grand Wizard? The Grand Wizard is the guy who in charge of the KKK. So you get slapped by the Grand Wizard here and then you say, oh wow. No, it's always been going on. So our ummah, we have to stop being apologetic people. But in not being apologetic, don't be crazy like the people who are from the Khawarij, well, they, they have that craziness. Don't be like that neither. Just be balanced. For the Yahi. Say it again, my brother. Holidays. Oh. For the man or the woman, the father or the mom? Muslims in general. So if, you, if you're a, a, a small family and you have babies, because there's sunnah people who are supposed to have a family where he was um, maybe making little dua or just in the way of the baby. I don't know anything as it relates to little babies. You do something special for them and when you're fasting or the month of Ramadan. I don't know anything like that. But what I do know is as the children start getting older, the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, used to let them fast, and then when they started getting hungry, they would let them play with things to busy their minds and things like that. And they used to be proud, and they used to talk to the Yehud about that, that our children are fasting, and they used to say that to them. But that's as they're growing. So those of us who have children who are six, seven, eight, nine, like this, we let them fast on a weekend only, let them fast half of the day, or according to what they can do. As for the little, little baby, I say, brother, anybody who has a little toddler, kiss that baby, call him, smell him, love him. Because as they grow, brother, as they grow up, Ismail, you with me, Ibrahim, Ismail, as those kids get 14, 15, 13, you start to scratch your head and say, hey, wasn't you that little baby that I was asking about in the masjid that time? But now he's 16, 15, 14 in London? And you say, what happened to that sweet little baby? I tell you what happened to him. 
the environment that he's been put in, the bi'ah. The Prophet said, "Ana bari'u min kulli Muslim yujamil mushrikeen la tatara'a naruhuma." I'm free of, from every Muslim who lives with the non-Muslims. Their fires do not coexist. This doesn't mean you cannot live with non-Muslims, but it's telling you there's a price to pay. Your fire and your, in their environment, that's their fire. Your Muslim, this is your fire. You and your wife, hijab, practicing LGBT, the telephone, the streets, all this stuff that's going on. Even if you're very religious, the Islamic school, your child is going to be exposed to all kind of stuff. So, again, dua. I don't know anything about little towers, my man. All right, Ikhwan, any more questions before we bounce and move out? From the guy I saw you from before. What's your country? Ahwaz. Ahwaz? Yeah, in Middle Arab and Iran. Oh. Five, five May Allah help our situation, brothers. Not only that country and uh, the two we mentioned, there are many countries with our community and other Muslims and people of color. You understand? White people are not better than anybody. And black people are not better than anybody. The best of the people, the people who bring benefit to people, the people who have taqwa. So we're not those people who are gonna let any Arab look at us. I personally believe that the jinns of the Arab has virtues. I believe that. I believe that. But I don't believe like an Arab just because he's an Arab, he's in Jannah. No. But the Arab jinns, I believe they have virtues. No doubt about that. But we are people are looking at this masjid, mashallah. There are different alwan and there are different um, colors and you come and that's the beauty of our religion. Christianity, they said that Jesus, Isa, is the son of Allah. And they made a picture of a white man, a white man with blue eyes and blonde hair. That's racism. Because the white person psychologically is going to say, God is in my color, his, his son. And then the people of color who worship that have inferiority complexes. The Yahud, they say they're the Sha'bullah al-Mukhtar. They are Allah's people, Allah's people. So they can do anything they want to do to the Gentiles. Come and take your land. It's racism. The deen of Islam, well, it dealt with all of that stuff. And I know a lot of African Americans, why we become Muslims. I didn't become Muslim because I had an epiphany about the importance of Allah's uluhiyah or his asma wa sifat or his rububiyah. I didn't become a Muslim for that. I became a Muslim because when I looked at Al Islam, it addressed the issue of racism. A man came. He said to Rasulullah, Ah, uh, he said, Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna talk to you tough, so be patient with me. Don't be upset. He said, Okay. The man said, Allahu Amaraka bihad al wudu. Did Allah order you with this wudu that you do? Suratul Ma'idah, our wudu. Rasulullah said, Allahumma na, Allah. And the man became a Muslim because he knew about nadaf and cleanliness. And he became a Muslim for that. Another man, his name is Rukana, 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 Rukana. He was a big wrestler. He said, I want to challenge you to a wrestling match. He beat everybody up. So I said, if I win, what do you do? He said, I accept this land if you win. He was so sure of himself. Rasulullah slammed that man down, boom. But the man was shocked. Why? Wow. He did it again. Slammed him down. Third time. The man said, I shadu an la ilaha illallah. Shadu anna Muhammad abduhur. Why? Because he noticed his superhuman strength. Go back and read that. It's an authentic hadith. There's another man, Abu Talha from Medina. He wanted to marry the lady. And it's his mother, Um Salim. Um Sulaim. I want to marry you. She said, look at the izzah. She said, hey, Abu Talha, Talha, I'm a Muslim and you're a Kafir. I can't marry you, but you're the type of man no woman would turn away from. If you say, la ilaha illallah, that'll be my mahar. He said, okay. And he gave the shahada. He was just interested in a lady. But as he started seeing the lady and her dawah, 
and he started seeing the community, he became from the best of the Muslims and gave his money for Al Islam. Allah has allowed us to marry the Jewish lady and the Christian lady as long as she's not a Zania. You can marry her, even if she's making shirk, even if she's eating pork, even if she's doing Christmas. You can marry her as long as she's not making Zina. But when we marry her, we don't give her any Islam. As a matter of fact, she says, I hate Islam in the Muslims. I hate Arabs. Look how this man is. That man, on the other hand, he saw that lady and he saw the community and he hassana Islam. He gave Fisa Bililah because he had a lot of money. So for me, I didn't, I didn't become a Muslim like those people because you have an epiphany and Allah. Some people do. Nope. It was because Islam addressed this racism issue. That's amongst us. Last two questions and then we got out. Somebody over here. This brother and that brother, then we out, inshallah. Where you from, my brother? Uganda. From what part? Central. Kampala. Welcome, my brother. I like Ugandans. I used to like Idi Amin and Jahiliya. Rahmatullah Ali. Inshallah. Is there a special virtue of giving sadaqah in the month of Ramadan? Is there a special virtue of giving sadaqah in the month of Ramadan? Yeah, there is special virtue. This is a very important question. This is one of the reasons, Ikhwan, you got to pay attention to this. A lot of people here, we give out zakat in the month of Ramadan. And the question is, why do you give your zakat in the month of Ramadan? I became a Muslim in Ramadan. I was a Muslim in Ramadan. I was in a place in a special university. I didn't have access. I was, I was in a special university. And I became a Muslim and almost apostated because the people who were around me didn't know what they were doing. Had me fasting from Fajr until past Isha. It was crazy. So if I give zakat, my zakat should be in the month of Ramadan because I accepted Islam in Ramadan. But if a person accepted Islam in Sha'ban, in Shawwal, he accepted Islam in Rajab, he should be given his zakat when that year goes around that he's been a new Muslim. From Rajab to Rajab. So you have to let the year go and have enough money and then you give the zakat. You don't wait until Ramadan to give zakat. But the scholars of Islam, they encourage the people of our ummah to give your zakat in Ramadan because of the virtues of the month. And in this month, things are ad'af, ad'af. Allah ta'ala increases the things that you do in the month of Ramadan because of the good of the month. So, yes, zakat is something that um, is uh, increased. And Allah knows best. My man. For the last question, the brother is asking, what about someone who's traveling for three hours or so and he doesn't find any difficulty? Um, is it okay for him not to fast? First of all, don't put any like time to it, really. Or don't even put a distance to it. Put to it what the Muslims of that locale look at it. What's the urf of the people? Because you can go from one side of London to the other side and it may take you two and a half, three hours on a particular day. What are we going to say? We don't fast those days? No, you have to fast those days because you're not a musafir. But what the Muslims consider to be a trip, you live in London and you're going to go to Birmingham, that's a rihla to us. That's a suffer. So therefore, we are going to break our fast. What about what the brother said? But it's easy. This guy got a, what's that car with the five rings on it? What's that car called? Audi. This man got an Audi. 2022. When you turn, the seats hug you and bring you over. So it's easy. Why, why, why? Nah, ya akhi. Allah said in the Quran, ma kan rabbuka nasiya. Your law wasn't forgetful. Your law wasn't forgetful when he made that ruling back then and he gave it to Prophet Muhammad. I mean, he knew what was about that Audi in our lives today. And then the people, how, where do we stop that? So if you want to wipe over your hoofs or you want to wipe over your socks, Something that the companions did both. They wiped over their shoes, their hoofs, and their socks. So some people say, well, well, you can't wipe on them now because, you know, 
eh, it's not the way it was before. You can't bring your shoes now because over there it was like that. It was the mystery. No, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Allah knew his religion. You can only wipe over your hoofs if you can walk a hundred yards in them. Where do you get that from? Where do you get that from? And this is we make the religion difficult and complicated for ourselves. So if a person is doing a trip, a sefer, that is known to the Muslim of that locale, even if it's easy for him to fast, he can break his fast. And Allah loves that. As the Prophet told his companion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umar, he said, Naha sadaqatun tasaddaqallahu biha alaykum faqbulu sadaqa rabbikum. He said, this is a sadaqa that Allah gave you people. So take the sadaqa of Allah, the fact that you can shorten. Not, you should shorten, you have to shorten when you travel. Or you don't fast. You don't have to fast, you break your fast. You get rewarded for breaking your fast. You get rewarded for what you would have done had you not been fasting. You still get rewarded for that, what you already done. So this is with the religion. Okay, Juan, you want to bring a stop right here? We just want to thank the admin here uh, for giving us the opportunity to come here. I may not see you brothers again. May never see you brothers again in my life. My boy Ibrahim lives not too far from, um, from here. Ibrahim is from Basasu. So anybody who's from Darod only, Darod, I give you permission to hit him. Only the Darod, only. Nobody else. No, no. Some people looking like this. What about us? Nobody hit my son. Nobody hit my son. But I just wanted to say to the admin and to you brothers, I may never see you people again. But if and when we meet again, Yom Al-Qiyamah hopefully will be in Jannah. My advice to you brothers, let the sunnah go forth and don't stop it. Let the sunnah, tamdi, let the sunnah go forth. What the Prophet brought, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and his aqidah, his dawah. What jihad was back then is now, the way it was. The ahkam, the adab, the time, the place. Not this khurafat and fasad. Learn the religion, be moderate, take it easy, and let this masjid be a place when people come into this masjid for the first time. He says, I smell the aroma of the sunnah in here. Not Bukhur, the Sunnah. What's the aroma of the Sunnah? People are welcoming you, people give you salams, you see the people reading the Quran, people are praying with the Sutra and all that. One thing I noticed, I want to say this before I leave, because in our masjids, listen to me, I don't know how much money this masjid has, but even if this masjid is a poor masjid, if you guys get on that right aqidah and the right application of Islam, wallahi, Allah is going to bless this community. But if we're praying, like we just prayed, and the imam goes down to Rukur, and we anticipate, and then he comes up, and we anticipate, there's a problem. The companions, may Allah be pleased with them, when the Prophet prayed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said, we would not move until he took his position. So when he went to Rukur, as soon as he got in it, that's when we went in. When he came up, and he stood up, that's when we came. Now, I'm not telling anyone to pay attention to this, but pay attention to this in the next prayer. You watch how many of us are anticipating. It's the salat of the majority of us. So listen to this. You know if you don't pray, some of Scott say you're Catholic. You're Catholic. I don't take that position. I think if a person doesn't pray and he's lazy, he's still a Muslim. But he's making a kabir from the kabair. And how I'm going to say he's a kafir? Because if I said he was a kafir, kafir, then that means maybe the majority of the Muslims are kuffar. Because everybody here knows someone who's not playing. His mother, his father, his sister, brother, cousin, neighbor, people work with him. He himself doesn't even pray all the time. So if everybody's a kafir who doesn't play, he's negligent, I know most people are kuffar. And that's, that's difficult to say. I believe he's sinning. But look, many Muslims don't pray. And then those who do pray, we're ghafilun, we're not paying attention, and we're just going through the motions. And then we say, Mata Nasrullah, when Allah is going to help us, when Allah, Allah is going to help us as when we do the right thing. That's my advice to you. 
وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات لا يستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم. That's what's going to happen. So my advice: let the sunnah go forth with moderation. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. شيبا يلا ولد كمان بوي وفيكم بارك الله